Alright, welcome back. Okay, so this we are in part 6 yeah, of uh, financial man, uh, financial statements. Yeah? We have just finished uh, looking at yeah, the difference uh, between accounting income and cash flow. Okay, when we, uh, the previous clip yeah, ended. Okay, so these are the two reasons. Yeah? Uh, I recap. Okay. One is accounting recognizes revenue yeah, uh, or expenses when a sale or purchase takes place, but not uh, collection yeah, of the sale or payment of the purchase is made. Yeah. Therefore, that's the first difference. Okay. The second difference is that the presence of non-cash expenses, yeah, for example, depreciation, yeah, amortization is another one yeah, uh, in accounting income. Okay, does not reflect actually a cash flow. Yeah? So in this case, the cash flows will be different from the accounting income. Yeah? Cash flows will be greater because depreciation is an expense, but it is not a cash outflow. Yeah? Therefore, the cash uh, cash flow will be greater than the accounting income yeah? in this particular case. Yeah? But in reality here, the cash flow may be higher or lower than the accounting income depending on these two reasons here yeah? and we will develop this yeah? we will look at this in greater detail uh, in the following slides now we are still in the third key point yeah? which is the difference between accounting uh, income and cash flow but here we describe a little bit more about the concept of cash flow yeah? cash flow is one of the most important pieces of information for a financial manager yeah? And this cash flow can be derived from financial statements. Fortunately, yeah, we can derive yeah from the financial statements. Okay, there are two types of statement here, and this can confuse students. Yeah, okay, uh, uh, not so with other books, but in this uh, book, yeah, in this particular textbook, we have the statement of cash flows. Yeah, which will be discussed in the next chapter. Okay. This statement of cash flows does not provide us the same information that we are looking at here. Yeah? That means this statement of cash flows does not provide this cash flow that we want. Okay, we will look at this statement of cash flows in the next chapter. Yeah? But here in this chapter, we will look at how cash is generated from utilizing the assets and how it is paid to those that finance the purchase of these assets. Yeah? So that's the foundation of what we call the cash flow statement. Now, this cash flow statement is different from the statement of cash flows. Yeah. Okay, and we will look at this uh, in the next slide here. The cash flow statement, that is this chapter, is not the same as the statement of cash flows. Yeah. Uh, this is okay. There's a mistake here. This should be next chapter. Yeah. This should be change this here to next chapter. Although these two are related. Okay, don't be confused. Yeah? The, these are two different statements. In fact, the in this chapter, this cash flow statement is not provided as a statement yeah, per se. Okay, but uh, I prefer to provide this as a statement because it's more uh, elegant yeah, as a statement. It's more, uh, what do you call, uh, neat yeah, or systematic to provide this as a statement. So we will call this the cash flow statement. But this cash flow statement is different. Yeah, it's not the same yeah, as the statement of cash flows that we'll see in the next chapter. Although these are related, these two are related. Yeah. Now the statement of cash flows actually ties. Yeah, this is the next chapter. Yeah, statement of cash flows actually ties together the income statement, okay, and the previous and current balance sheets. Okay, and therefore, actually, this uh, statement of cash flows can be applied for both. Yeah. Cash flow statement as well as statement of cash flows, yeah, because these statements actually is derived from the income statement plus this year or current balance sheet and the previous year balance sheet. Yeah? So you need three statements uh, to derive this statement of cash flows or the cash flow statement. Yeah, so you need one the income statement, then you need the current balance sheet and you need the previous balance sheet so there are three statements here yeah? okay and these three statements are used to derive the statement of cash flows as well as the cash flow statement yeah now this statement of cash flows provide uh, insight into a company's investment financing and operating
operating activities. Yeah. So these cash flows are divided into investment, financing, and operating. Yeah. Remember this uh, ties yeah or aligns nicely with the three types of decisions that a financial manager needs to make. Remember the first one is long-term investment. Yeah. So the long-term investment partly comes in this investment decision. Then you have long-term financing that also partly comes in financing. Yeah. Uh, cash flow position then you have day-to-day -day operating yeah so this comes working capital comes under operating activities yeah so this uh, neatly comes into the three decisions that the financial manager makes yeah therefore it's quite relevant for us okay but this statement of cash flows will have to wait until the next chapter yeah in this chapter we look at the concept of cash flow yeah so with that we finish the third key concept in this chapter now we move on to the fourth key concept next okay which is the taxes yeah we'll come up uh, we'll come back to the cash flow yeah uh, at the end of this chapter okay but now we move on to the fourth key concept or key point which is taxes yeah this is uh, to do with uh, the us yeah environment so we ignore this point we come to this yeah marginal versus average tax rates yeah Okay, because the tax regimes in different countries are different. Okay, we don't. Uh, some of the things that discussed in the book is not so relevant to the Malaysian environment. Yeah, but even here, marginal versus average tax rates, uh, it's not uh, very useful. I think it's important to know because the tax environment may change uh, over time. Yeah. Right now, for all intents and purposes, we have only one flat uh, tax rate for corporations, yeah, or for companies. Okay, the uh, company income tax rate or business yeah, income tax rate is a flat rate usually, yeah, for intent for all intents and purposes, yeah, it's a flat rate. Okay, but um, this may change in the future. Therefore, students need to know what is the difference between average and marginal. Yeah? When you have only one tax rate, there's no difference between marginal and average. But when you have progressive tax rates, that means different incomes are taxed at different rates, then okay, there will be a difference between marginal and average tax rates. Yeah? So therefore, I think it's important to know okay, what is marginal tax rate. Yeah? So the marginal tax rate is defined here. It's the percentage paid on the next dollar or ringgit earned. Yeah, that means next ringgit uh, of taxable income. Okay. So let's say you earn one more dollar or ringgit of taxable income. So how much of that will be paid here yeah, as tax? That will be your marginal tax rate. Now the average tax rate is simply the total tax that the company pays or the business pays divided by the taxable income yeah? that will be the average tax rate okay so the average tax rates uh, vary according to different companies and industries yeah? this also depends on the uh, tax regime yeah? the tax arrangement in a particular country different countries uh, practice different uh, tax rates yeah and therefore this may change yeah this IRS is for the US environment, yeah? therefore it's not so relevant for our purpose, yeah? so we'll skip that. Now let's try and apply this, yeah? a marginal versus average tax rate, uh, given an example. Yeah? So here because in Malaysia we don't have uh, different yeah? uh, tax rates for different levels of income, we have only one flat tax rate. So we will we will not be able to use a Malaysian example. So we try and use a US example here. Yeah? Suppose your firm earns four million dollars, okay, of taxable income. Okay, what is the firm's tax liability? Okay, that's the first question. What is the average tax rate and what is the marginal tax rate? Yeah. Okay. So we'll come back to a second question a bit later once we've addressed the first question. Yeah. In order to do that, we need the tax schedule. Yeah. Okay, and we have to use or refer to the American uh, tax schedule. Yeah? So we we'll look at that uh, in this example. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> we look at this. Uh, okay. Let me just drag this. Uh, okay. Yeah. You can't see it very clearly. Um, right. Let me just drag this to the side. Okay. Yeah? Right. 
Now you can see this. Okay. Now this is the taxable income. It is this uh, from the example four million. Okay, that's the taxable income. Now this in blue, right? Uh, these two columns. Yeah. This would be given. Yeah? This is given. This is the tax bracket actually. Yeah. Column B here and column E. This is called the tax bracket. So. If your tax taxable income is fifty thousand or less, then your marginal tax rate will be fifteen percent. Yeah. If your taxable income bracket is uh, between fifty thousand and seventy five thousand, your marginal tax rate will be twenty five percent, and so on. Yeah? So this is what we call progressive tax rate, or different yeah, tax rates at different levels of income. So this must be given. Yeah? This is the environment in the U.S. Okay, so know that. And yeah? this is given. Yeah, all right. Now we develop this column C. Yeah, this column C. If we look at this, this is the total income range in bracket. That means it is from zero to fifty thousand. Therefore, the total range is fifty thousand. Yeah, here it is twenty five thousand. How do you get twenty five thousand? This is seventy five thousand, the highest level in the income bracket minus the lowest which is 50,000 or you can minus the previous level highest 50,000 yeah? so 75,000 minus 50,000 you get 25,000 here and so on yeah so you compute all this except for the last yeah you can't compute because it is more than 18.3 million yeah? so there's no limit here total limit is not known yeah so that's how you compute this yeah? you can compute this Okay, all these are computed that way. Now the the cells in white, this you have to compute. Yeah, how do you compute? Okay, you can take this. Yeah, four million is definitely more than three hundred thirty-five thousand. This point here. Yeah, but it is less than ten million. Yeah, so this taxable income will straddle. Yeah, this bracket until this bracket, but it won't straddle this bracket. Yeah, therefore this is empty here. Know this. Yeah. It's so all empty here. Therefore, it will cover in full this bracket, okay, this range, this range, this range, and this range. Finally, this will be partially covered yeah, because the total is 9.6 million here. That is 10 million minus 335,000. Yeah, so you get 9,665,000 uh, yeah, dollars in this bracket. Okay, so now this four million must be used to cover this fifty thousand in the first, then twenty five thousand in the second bracket, twenty another twenty five thousand in the third bracket, another two hundred thirty five thousand in the fourth bracket, and then finally, yeah, three million six hundred sixty five thousand and uh, uh, three million six hundred sixty five thousand yeah in the uh, fifth bracket. So when you add all this, okay, this must be equal to four million. Is that okay? Right. So this is important to compute. Yeah. Once you've computed this, then you can compute the tax that the company needs to pay. Yeah. That means it means here from the first fifty thousand. Yeah. That the company has earned in terms of uh, taxable income, fifteen percent must be paid as tax. Therefore, it is seven thousand five hundred. Yeah. So it's actually fifty thousand multiplied by fifteen percent. You get seven thousand five hundred. On the next twenty-five thousand that the company earns, it must pay twenty-five percent of each dollar yeah, as tax. Therefore, twenty-five thousand multiplied by twenty-five percent, you get six thousand two hundred and fifty. Yeah, and you do that yeah throughout for the others as well. Yeah. In the last bracket, you take three million uh, six hundred sixty-five thousand multiplied by thirty-four percent. You get this total, yeah, uh, this amount, which is one point two four six, okay, thousand one million two hundred forty-six thousand one hundred dollars. Yeah, so this will be the tax for this bracket. Now the total tax will be when you add all this. This will be tax for the first income range bracket, the second, third, fourth, and fifth, yeah, final. So this will be the total tax owed to the government. Yeah? So this will be the total tax. When you add all this, you get 1.36 million. Now, how do you get the average tax rate? Average tax rate will be